Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining our live webinar for the RFQ demo. My name is Alina. I am in charge of the customer success team at Procuria. Uh, my colleague Eugene and I uh, will share with you today how to launch an RFQ with Procuria and have a faster supplier selection process. This will take us uh, about 20 minutes. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have a Q&A session for five minutes. Uh, if, if we will not manage to address all the questions, we'll make sure to come back to you by email. So uh, now I think we are ready to start. Eugene can, can take over from here. Thank you very much, Alina. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Eugene, and I'm a business development manager at Procuria. If you have joined this demo, you're probably starting to notice that organizing your sourcing events or your supplier database just with emails and Excel files isn't quite good enough or efficient anymore. Maybe you're looking for a system to stay on top of everything. Well, that's what Procuria is. It's a cloud-based platform used for automating sourcing and supplier management. When we talk about sourcing, we mean launching events like RFIs, RFQs, RFPs, reverse auctions, Dutch auctions, or dynamic allocation auctions. While related to supplier management, our tool can help with supplier relationship management, segmentation, performance reviews, onboarding, and scorecards. Now let's uh, jump right into the platform and uh, I, will, uh, I will share my screen just in a second. Okay, so uh, my screen should, uh, should, now be, should now be visible. Basically, uh, this is the main dashboard of, uh, of Procuria. Here we have all our sourcing events, which are organized into, into projects. The projects can be related to uh, the departments, uh, to, the, uh, to any subsidiaries, to the, pro the products that you're buying. So you can organize them however you need. Or if you don't need this functionality, you can just put all your sourcing events into uh, under one project. On the events, on the events uh, section, we have all our uh, sourcing events organized under under all the we see all the names of the of the projects, and we can uh, we can filter these, uh, for example, uh, via status. So we can uh, we can always see uh, all the all the events that we want under different uh, statuses. So we all always have control uh, of of the events. Now, for the for the purpose of this demo, let's assume that I'm a company that needs to buy office furniture. Therefore, I want to create an RFQ, and I will do this by clicking on Add Event, click on RFQ, I will just select the project, and then click on Save. This is the, this is the main view of the, of the RFQ, which has uh, six sections, and I will uh, shortly uh, walk you through, through each of them. On the General Information section, we have the, the name of the, of the RFQ. We'll just put a we'll just put a name, and under the the description we put we have to uh, have the information that we want the the suppliers to see. The, the description should be as detailed as possible for the suppliers to know exactly what uh, what you are looking for. Under the documents section, we can add we can add documents for the for the suppliers to to see and uh, and review. I'll just add a few documents. I'll add some tech specs, let's say, and I will also add an NDA for uh, for the suppliers to to sign. On the settings section, uh, we have we we can select an, an end date. So basically, when uh, when the uh, the event will end, the owner who is the person responsible for the for this event. We can also select the currency in which we want the bids from the supplier to be displayed. We also have uh, some other functionalities. And if you just hover over this the small I uh, button, you can see exactly what, uh, what they do. Under the suppliers section, we will add all the suppliers that we uh, want to participate in this, uh, this RFQ. And these are added from a supplier directory, which uh, we need to already have defined uh, in, uh, in Procuria before we start uh, an uh, RFQ. I will just add a few a few suppliers. We can filter them uh, under um, whatever we need, under category segmentations. So we can uh, we can play with this however we we need. I will just add let's say four suppliers, and then click on save. After that, we have the item section where basically we have to define the the products or services that we as buyers want to want to purchase from uh, from the suppliers. And here we can add the items. We can add them one by one, let's say, but with the add button, we just click on name. Let's say we want to buy some chairs. We can put a description, unit pieces, quantity, let's say 10. 
or if we have a, a large uh, a large selection of products or services we can add them from a, from an excel file directly i will just delete this uh, this item and i will just add them from file we would have to download the template spreadsheet first complete it and then upload the file i have uh, i have a file already prepared with uh, with three items and click on add items and the uh, the items have already been populated moving on we have the uh, the the questions uh, the question section where we can add a uh, we can add uh, all the questions that we want to get from uh, from the we want to add ask the suppliers for example maybe in this uh, this item template we we only ask for the prices but here on the questions we want to add more we want to ask for more information what uh, what am i referring to i have already a, a template prepared which is the same principle as with the items we just add all this uh, these questions and for example we can ask the suppliers to sign on uh, to sign an nda let's uh, let's say in this question we can mark it as a mandatory question and the supplier can can attach uh, can attach documents on the under the warranty section this is a single choice type question where we ask the supplier to uh, provide us warranty we can give him uh, like in the situation we can give him options one year two year three year or four years we can also enable the supplier to attach uh, to attach documents uh, and uh, and so on with uh, with other other questions so we can obtain as much information from the suppliers as possible speaking of uh, obtaining as much information as possible on the items uh, on the item section, a very important thing here is that the template that you are seeing is simply a default template. So basically, we can add uh, whatever columns we we need here in order to get all the required info from the from the suppliers. How we do this? We have here a button. We change the template, and if we would click on Manage Templates, we would simply create another template where we could add other uh, columns. We, I have already created uh, some, some templates on this account, but for the purpose of this demo, I will use the, the default items template. Moving, uh, moving on, uh, I have covered all the, all the sections of an, of an RFQ, and basically when the buyer finishes uh, completing all these sections, we can publish the event, which I will do right now, and we will now see in the next, uh, in the next part of the demo, we will see exactly what happens on the supplier on the supplier part and how a supplier can answer to uh, to the RFQ. We see that the event has been uh, has been published. The event is now active, and now if we go uh, if we go and see, I will show you just in a second what the supplier receives. Basically, the supplier will receive an email. An email message that uh, that looks uh, that looks like this. It is a short uh, short introduction, the name of the RFQ, and the the description that we just uh, that we input earlier. All the supplier has to do here is click on view event on this button. The supplier is redirected to a secure response page where he agrees on the on the terms and uh, terms and conditions of Procuria. And after that, the supplier is redirected to the RFQ response page. An excellent feature here is that the suppliers do not need a username or password. There are no supplier portals in Procuria. They just need to access that link and all the information is, is available here. Uh, the supplier uh, can choose to participate or decline. Whatever he chooses, uh, the buyer will be informed via, via email of, of this choice. Let's choose as the supplier, let's choose to, to participate. After we choose to participate, we can see all this, all the information. We see the, the description, the start date, the end date of the, of the uh, RFQ. The supplier can, um, can download the, the documents, can, uh, can review them. And on the item section, uh, the supplier can input the, the prices in the response column. Uh, I will do this uh, right now. Uh, or if, uh, if let's suppose we had like uh, many more many more items. Let's suppose that we had like 100 items, for example, we could uh, use an, an Excel file. We could simply download uh, the existing records. We would then complete the file and then upload, upload it back and the column would be populated automatically. So uh, it is this simple to, uh, to complete the, the items, uh, items template. I've done this now manually and moving on, we have the, uh, the question section where uh, the supplier uh, needs to answer the questions. The questions marked with the red asterisk here means that uh, the question is uh, is mandatory. So 
first question is uh, first question we need to sign and attach the NDA. Let's attach the, the, the signed NDA. Short message here. After that, on the warranty, we have a single choice question. Let's choose one year. On the delivery, we have another type of question, a multiple choice question, and we can choose when uh, where we as suppliers where we can deliver the goods let's suppose we can deliver the goods in all these locations payment and in the experience and references section we can uh, we can add whatever information we need and we can also attach documents let's say please find the batch all references and attach a uh, attach a document after after the supplier uh, completes all this uh, all this information all he has to do is simply submit a, uh, submit a response. After clicking on submit a, uh, a response, I will show you what happens on uh, on the buyer's side. I'm now moving back to to the buyer's uh, to the buyer's view, and we can see in the supplier section we can see the the bids. We can see that a response has been uh, has already been submitted, and we can see also what what the other suppliers have. Uh, have done so in real time we can we can see exactly what happens to, to the suppliers we see that i have two two responses so this is a good thing the suppliers have uh, started to to answer to the rfq we see that a response is uh, is in draft and an invitation has not been uh, has not been read yet basically so uh, there is uh, there is no need here to uh, send emails to to suppliers let's say and get get tangled up with with all the email communication we have here this information at uh, at all times and we know exactly what uh, what happens with them so uh, i have uh, i have covered what uh, uh, how to how to launch an rfq and how uh, the how a supplier answers to to an rfq now uh, in the next section of the of the demo i will show you what a buyer can do while the event is uh, is active basically one of the first things that is that a buyer can do uh, while the event is active, we can add more suppliers during the event by clicking on the Add button from the Supplier section. Let's simply add some more uh, suppliers. I want to add two more suppliers, let's, uh, let's say, and they will appear shortly here. So they are now in, uh, in this section. Uh, what we can, another thing that we can do uh, is uh, we can change the end time. Let's suppose that we as buyers want to uh, maybe give some more time to the to the suppliers to to respond. And if we want to do this, we can do this by clicking on the change end time. We just go here and let's uh, let, let's uh, give the suppliers two more days to answer. Let's say we click on save, and after after this, the suppliers will be notified via via email. Of the new of the new end time, so they know exactly at any time uh, how much they uh, they have until the event is ended. Another another excellent feature of Procuria is the uh, pause resume uh, functionality. Basically, during uh, during an event, the buyer has the functionality to to pause uh, pause an event, and if the if the event is paused, the supplier can uh, cannot do any changes to their responses. They can still access the response page. They cannot edit. What happens during this uh, during this stage? Basically, the buyer can edit uh, all the information from the description. He can add more documents. He can change the items. Can add more items, for example, or even add more questions. So this is quite a very useful feature because let's suppose that uh, you as a buyer have forgotten some information at the beginning of the RFQ. There is no need to restart it or cancel it. You just simply put. You put the event on pause. You can show an alert banner to suppliers, so the suppliers know exactly what what is happening. That the event is uh, is paused, and if we pause the event, I'm going now to the to the supplier side, and on the supplier side we see this uh, this banner that the event was paused by the buyer. And here we can put whatever information we we want, and we can as suppliers we can acknowledge this uh, this message. Moving that, moving back to the to the buyer side. So I am now back on on the buyer side. After we can, after we do all the all the necessary changes, we can even uh, let's say we want to put some more information on the on the description, or we want to change something here. After we do all the changes, the buyer can simply resume the the event. And when the event is resumed, you can uh, we can move all the responses of the suppliers back in draft. Let's suppose that we had had already some responses from the suppliers. And we want to give them the opportunity to answer to the new 
uh, questions or to provide quotations on the new items. So we can move all the responses back to draft and we can show an alert banner to the suppliers that the event has been resumed and we can let them know uh, that uh, the event was resumed and what, what changes have been, uh, have been done. And after we click on resume, the event is simply resumed. Another another thing that the buyer can do while the event is uh, is active, we can um, uh, what we can do is use this functionality of a message center, which basically means uh, communicating with the with the suppliers. What we can do is simply click on add. I have a short uh, error here, but it's uh, no problem. On the message type, we have a uh, let, let's suppose that we want the clarification. We want to uh, to provide some more clarifications regarding a question, let's say, and we want to broadcast this information to, to all the suppliers. We can broadcast the information to the suppliers that have already responded to the event, so who have read the invitation and have accepted it. And when I click address to, I can address it to the suppliers. I can remove some of them, so I can provide this information to the suppliers. And we can say, please find attached more, more details. After clicking on send, what happens is basically all the suppliers receive an email uh, notification that uh, they have received uh, they have received a, a message. And if we go back to the to the supplier side, which I will now do, and I will simply uh, refresh. Uh, we we should be able to see on the on the message center we see the the message from from, from the buyer so here we can uh, we can acknowledge this let's say great thank you and what this functionality means is that all the information you can start you can start this inform these information threads and all the information is in one place very easy to audit very easy to to keep track of so uh, uh, this is one of the functionalities of Procuria. Regarding the messaging functionality, uh, it can also happen both ways. So let's say that the supplier has uh, wants some wants some clarification from the buyer. This is also uh, this can also be done. The, and here in the supplier's view, we can click on add. We can address the question to the buyer. So the principle is quite uh, quite the same. And we can uh, we can have uh, threads uh, communication threads with uh, with the buyer. To in, in order to clarify any any information, and uh, also the the last uh, the last functionality that I would like to to show you in this uh, uh, in this state when the event is uh, is active, uh, let's suppose that an event is ended. I will show you uh, an uh, an event, a similar one, uh, which is now ended, and we have this functionality called compare responses, where we can see all the responses of uh, of the suppliers all in one place. Everything is, is quite easy to, to, um, to check here. We can also, when the event is ended, we can also mark the, the answers of the suppliers with whom we want to, to work with. And in the marked section, we will see their, uh, the responses. So basically we will see all the suppliers that we want to work with and the, and the, their pricing. So this, uh, this is an excellent feature that, um, Many of our clients have uh, have said that it is good because it basically uh, makes the it, it reduces the time in which uh, buyers uh, you know receive all the all the offers and put them together. It usually takes uh, takes other companies like one day, let's say. With this, you can have them at your fingertips at any time. So, if the event is active or if it's ended, you have this functionality to see all the responses in one place. From here, what you can do is you can export this information into Excel. And uh, from here, you can do further analysis. And I will show you uh, just in a second how, uh, how it looks. So it is the same, but in, in, an Excel, in an Excel format. And from here, like I said, you can do further, further analysis. And also in the compare responses section, we have uh, we have the responses to all of the, uh, the questions from the questionnaire where we can export all this information uh, again in an Excel format. We can also export all the attachments to review them further. So we can also do that with uh, uh, with Procuria. And uh, basically, uh, this has been uh, a... Um, a very uh, a very basic uh, run of uh, of how an uh, of how an RFQ 
uh, works in uh, in Procuria. Uh, I will now uh, ask my uh, my colleague Alina to to go to uh, to the Q and A. We'll go to the short Q and A uh, section. But uh, just a just a short a bit of information uh, um, before the Q and A. Uh, basically, in order to to test and experience what we've uh, what we've shown you here and also more, we have a two week free trial that you can access uh, on our site www.procuria.com. You can you just cl simply click on start free trial. There's no credit card required or such things. You simply test the platform, see if it's a fit for you, and if you want to go more in depth or have any questions, we can schedule another demo with you and your team. So it is uh, it is that uh, that simple. Now, uh, Alina, if you can uh, help me with the, the questions, please. Sure, thank you, Eugen. Great presentation. Uh, so we have uh, so far uh, two questions. First one is, um, uh, hey guys, we usually have a comprehensive Excel sheet uh, that I share to my supplier for codes. Uh, how do I do that in Procuria? Uh, well, that's a great question because we usually have these uh, questions fro from um, our uh, uh, newly uh, registered clients, but also uh, from the ones from the existing ones that are using uh, for uh, for a few years now. Uh, so basically, one of the um, uh, great functionality which I love most at Procuria is that um, uh, for uh, for each uh, event you can define your own uh, item template Eugene if you can click uh, on one of your events uh, uh, let's show a little bit the the item section so sure. what we can do here um, is that um, uh, on the items right is that we can create uh, based on your specific needs we can create uh, basically the columns that you want to to send to suppliers uh, and uh, to add as many columns uh, as you need um, uh, in order to gather all the information um, in case uh, the uh, the, the Excel basically uh, has so many columns that will be a little bit difficult for the uh, for the suppliers to see in the platform. We also have a functionality which is called uh, activate multiple tabs on the items. And uh, I think, um, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, if you, Eugene, can, can explain a little bit what you have designed here. Certainly. So uh, this is just an um, an example from the uh, automotive industry. So uh, let's suppose that in this particular case, uh, the buyer would like to to buy, let's say, some uh, some brake components. And obviously, uh, each sub -com each component has uh, multiple sub components. And we want to you know we want to uh, get uh, pricing and other information as well for each. Uh, component and subcomponents, and for this we have uh, broken the information basically in in uh, in more tabs. And here we can, uh, as we can see, we have other other templates in place. For example, in this situation, I can also get that template. As I've explained in the creation of the RFQ, we can define these templates however we need. And if I would use the automotive template instead of just getting a simple response. I could get in this situation, I could get a price per unit, a price for 100 pieces, 200, 300. I could get the lead time, delivery locations. So we can definitely play with this however we, we need. And also uh, we can put uh, more, we can put templates depending on each uh, on each tab. For example, on the additional services, I want to use another template where we see that we can get uh, locations, descriptions. So all these tabs have multiple uh, templates in order to suit every buyer's needs and all that he wants to get from the supplier. Okay, great. Uh, I hope this uh, answers the question. Um, a second one is, um, uh, how do I see all my suppliers in the platform? Uh, right. Uh, we have um, on the top menu, we have um, a special menu for the supplier directory. So yes, please click the supplier directory. So uh, before running an event, uh, your first event, let's say like this uh, in Procuria, uh, we need uh, we need first to have the, um, the suppliers that you'd like to invite in the event to be added here under the supplier directory. Um, uh, you can add them one by one by clicking the, the Add Supplier button. 
So basically everything uh, you see here is the summary for creating a supplier. We call suppliers a company and you have here a name. You can even write something, let's say com company A, for example, this is uh, the, the supplier's company. You can uh, add uh, details like country or address or uh, whatever you need to, to uh, keep, keep track. Uh, click save, right? We have an internal info section where you can add a category. All these categories are, are defined um, individually for each account. So it will be your own category. Uh, we also have segmentation. If you're using something like this, like a tier one, tier two, uh, this is fully customizable and also risk, All right? You can choose mm -hmm. exactly green, save. Uh, what else? We have uh, um, for uh, a supplier, so we have defined the company and then uh, we need to further um, add the contact. So basically the contact is the person, the email address that you are going to invite into your uh, event. So we write here the name, okay, and the email. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how you simply define, um, you simply create um, uh, a supplier uh, with a contact uh, person. But um, uh, the easiest way to, to add your suppliers into Procuria is also to um, import. So we have this functionality, it's import with Excel. Um, it's uh, usually used uh, a lot uh, when first setting up the account. Uh, we help our customers to to upload the, the suppliers uh, and then uh, they will uh, from from there they, they can add uh, some others or continue uh, using the the ones that uh, have been uh, uh, initially uh, uploaded okay if you have something else Eugene, on this uh, on this page to add maybe will help uh, well, uh, basically, what uh, what we can do in this uh, supplier directory is that uh, we can change this view however we need. So we can add an, mm -hmm. we can add other other uh, um, columns here. We can filter them. We can do whatever we we need, you know, in order to have the the best view that uh, that suits us. So we can definitely customize Procuria even the supplier directory in order to suit every uh, every buyer's uh, every buyer's needs. Mm -hmm. and I, Thank you. No problem. Um, because we still have like two minutes left, uh, one last feature that maybe it will be really interesting to show uh, is the internal collaboration part with the other departments or the stakeholders, uh, right? If you can go on an event, um, you, you can you can uh, explain what's uh, happening yeah. here. Sure. So um, uh, this is just an, uh, an example. This is an ended event, but in the internal info section, we can start an internal thread with the other users of, uh, of Procuria. What this means is in this particular case, let's say that we had the uh, RFQ with the office furniture, but uh, we can ask in this case, we can ask the colleague from the legal, we can ask him to, to check if everything is okay. Then we can discuss with someone from, from commercial, let's say, in order to give us an, uh, an okay regarding the RFQ. So basically you can have all, all this, uh, all the communication. So with your internal team, you can have it here stored in uh, in one place. You can keep a very clear track of all the all the info. You can add all attachments for uh, if needed. So this is also quite very useful because you don't need to uh, use other communication tools. Everything is cleared and structured in Procuria. Great. So I think this concludes our webinar. Um, we do hope you find this useful. Uh, we will send you the recording and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you very much for joining. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.